Welcome to an introduction to accounting brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information, look us up Park Bench Tutors on Facebook or parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we are going to continue our brief look at bookkeeping and try and explain the purpose to you of daybooks. Daybooks began in the days before there was accounting software, since accounting software now requires only that you enter an invoice to a customer or an invoice received from a supplier. You click on something which says post and all the necessary entries are made to the accounts. However, before that sort of software was developed, then there were a number of entries that were needed for manual accounting records. The main ledger accounts were kept in the nominal or the general ledger. But, supposing that you had a thousand customers, then in the nominal ledger you would probably have thousands and thousands of entries on trade receivables and thousands and thousands of entries on sales over the year. That would become extremely difficult to follow and certainly very difficult to analyse. So, what was needed was a way of determining the sales relating to each customer's and bookkeepers used a system that made use of a sales daybook and a purchaser's daybook. The idea of the sales daybook was that you listed each invoice that was sent out to a customer and then at the end of the day you totaled up all those invoices and that was the figure that you used to post to the nominal ledger accounts. And of course it is the posting to the nominal ledger which gives rise to the double entry those entries that you make in the sales day book are not part of the double entry system. Let's have an example here. Croppet and Floggett are timber merchants. So we're looking at the sales day book here for January the 5th and we can see three entries have been made. Invoices have been sent to Ronald Free, Helen Reed and James Limited giving a total of £969.33. So, our double entry in the nominal ledger would be to debit the trade receivables with 969.33 and to credit the sales with 969.33. Right, that is our double entry. A purchaser's day book would be maintained in a similar way. Here we've got invoices which have been received from Gilbert, Yuletide Lights and Ursula Noon which total £270. So the double entry is to credit the trade payables with 270 and to debit purchases with 270. Now to keep a clear record of what was going on it's also necessary to keep subsidiary ledgers. These are the sales ledger or the debtors ledger as it used to be known and the purchases ledger or what was called the creditors ledger. And those ledgers would record entries to individual accounts for each customer or supplier. So in the case of the sales ledger, you would have an account for Ronald Free, an account for Helen Reed, and an account for James Limited. And our sales daybook entries would be entered as debits to Ronald Free, Helen Reed, and James Limited. Notice their debits. We're recording the accounts from our viewpoint. Right? They owe us those amounts. And of course, just as the trade receivables at uh, had an entry of 900 and something pounds so those three will add up to that same figure. In the purchaser's ledger in the same way you will show separate accounts for Gilbert, Yuletide Lights, Nursel and Noon and just as though were entries as credits to trade payables so they will be entered as credits here. They record what we owe to each of these suppliers. Now if you have a manual system of daybooks for sales and purchases You also need another set for the returns, sales returns and purchases returns. And here we've got sales returns book, two entries for Ronald Free, Helen Reed, (coughs) a total of £25 for that day. And the double entry in the nominal ledger will be to credit trade receivables with 25, debit sales returns with 25. (coughs) <coughs> the entries to the customer accounts are shown where they will be credits just the same credits to Ronald Free and credits to Helen Reed. So you've got a similar set of entries for any purchases returns as well in the corresponding set of books and accounts. The sales day book and purchases day book and the returns book will show more information than we've shown here so that here's a more typical example where you will break it down 
in a sales day book so you'll show entries for date customer invoice number there should always be a reference so you can identify the sales ledger account right so you can identify the customer in that subsidiary ledger and you will record the net amount and the VAT amount separately and of course the total because the postings will actually be to the net amount for a customer would go to trade receivables and of course the VAT would be recorded uh, separately eventually um, however that's the use of daybooks and that ends our short podcast thank you for watching and for listening.